नमस्कार दोस्तों वेलकम बैक एट लिट ई सिटी विद अनदर एक्साइटिंग सेशन ऑफ क्विक फायर प्रैक्टिस सेट फॉर अपकमिंग एन टी ए नेट एग्जाम दिस टाइम डियर फ्रेंड्स वी हैव ब्रॉट सम गुड क्वेश्चन फॉर अवर नेक्स्ट यूनिट यूनिट नंबर फाइव वे आर यू विल फाइंड क्वेश्चन रिलेटेड विद लैंग्वेज इट्स बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट एस्पेक्ट पेडोलॉजी एंड टर्म्स रिलेटेड टू विद इट so here we is here comes our first question constructions like round rat or in modern english well road for the sea and bone house or we can say bone house for body these are example actually these are the terms related with old english and these are the terms these construction are known as first option is metonymy second is synecdoche third is canon and the fourth option is compounding dear friend these construction where some nouns are compounded together was a particular feature of old english and the term used for such compounding is known as can it is one of the most important feature of old english language our second question is the process through which many old germanic english spellings you all should know that it is basically western german dialect of indian european language branch from which english is basically uh, as a language it is it evolved so the process through which many old germanic english spellings got changed around about 7th century due to various social and political factors what is the name for this process is it great vowel shift is it i mutation is it transmutation and your options are first and second great vowel shift or i mutation i mutation or transmutation great vowel shift or transmutation or all of the above dear friends it is actually great vowel shift and i mutation in which many of the spellings uh, that contain this particular vowel sound i here i was muted and in its place some other vowel was used so this was one of the reason how old english transformed into the middle english and later into the modern english which of the following popular idioms doesn't have its origin in shakespearean works shakespeare along with chaucer is considered to be one of the uh, greatest innovator contributor to the development of language not only just as a literary artist but also as a coiner of new words he is very important so here are some expressions taken from his plays one among them is not it was greek to me second is my salad days third is a foregone conclusion and the last one is above the sod out of these four expression one is not attributed to be originally used by shakespeare in one of his plays and dear friend it is above the sword all other three expressions are taken from his plays there are not only these three almost there are 40 to 60 expression which have become part and parcel of everyday ordinary language in which alphabet the old english was written we all know that there were many influences on the old english but obviously the alphabet which was used to write this old english was it gaelic second option is runes or runic third option is latin and the last option is celtic out of these four particular alphabet the alphabet in which old english was written was runic or runic which was once again a sort of germanic alphabet our next question is which of the following set of english words is not borrowed from norns once again an important part of the development of english language it is uh, its borrowing heavy borrowing from languages like french due to, uh, during the norman conquest period from latin once again uh, indirect french influence from greek and from other european languages and one of these languages is obviously norse one from which many old english words were taken and borrowed was it bang boat egg was it outlaw race for was it trust 
weak window or the last option history idol laurel out of these four set one set is that uh, where words are not taken from original norse words it is actually history idol and laurel which are taken from latin uh, sources and uh, all other words they are taken from norse language our next question is from which old english dialect modern standard english is descended it is a great topic of study many uh, linguistics have tried to find the traces that which was a dialect because even in that period during the 7th 8th and 9th centuries there were four to five dialects spoken by the people of that particular area was it northumbrian then we have middle english or known as mercian dialect then there was kentish and the last one is west saxon dialogue uh, dialect a very interesting fact i would like to add here is that though politically western west saxon dialect was more prominent but it was not the dialect from which modern standard english is descended it is rather middle english or mercian language because it was spoken near london which was becoming a center of trade commerce and other activities that is why this dialect gained prominence and later modern standard english uh, is basically now uh, ba based on this particular dialect during the renaissance period at the beginning of modern punctuation system which among these symbols was used in place of comma comma was uh, in english punctuation system introduced a bit later and before that this particular symbol was used was it period or full stop colon or was it virgule or we can say slash or hyphen dear friend it is an interesting piece of knowledge it was virgule which was used uh, most of the times in place of comma it was only uh, at the end of 16th century that comma become a popular and regular punctuation mark in english grammatical structure which among these words is not an example of back formation now dear friends i hope you should know about back formation first let let's see the words in the options first is added then we have babysit then we have accredit and last one is babysitter now you can have an idea there are two words babysit and babysitter dear friend what is a back formation back formation is the process uh, through which uh, we derive a shorter uh, word from a longer syntax generally what happens in word formation we add a prefix or suffix and make a word but in back formation we remove, uh, we either remove something and make generally make a verb out of it i have given you an of hint now the right answer is back babysitter it is not the back formation you can look at these word edit is actually introduced later editor was earlier and then removing uh, oh, uh, the suffix we came to the verb edit similarly babysit is derived from babysitter another example of back formation accreditate it is accreditation and then uh, suffix is removed removed and ac uh, accreditate is made so it is only babysitter uh, from which uh, babysit is uh, derived this is not an example of back formation our next question is what is the name for the lexeme which contains two identical or very similar constituents examples can be taken words like goody goody or ding dong there is a very uh, we can say minute change the only a uh, uh, vowel change what is the name for such construction is it reduplicative second is blank words then we have compound words and the last option is back formation obviously we have seen about the back formation dear friend it is reduplicative in which we duplicate the first word to make a kind of new construction and that is known as reduplicative what is the name for a lexeme created for temporary use to solve an immediate problem of communication sometimes we do not have a word for a particular context for a particular explanation 
and a word is used and it is only for temporary use it means it doesn't become the part of our regular vocabulary so what is the name for it is it nonsense words it is nonce is it portmanteau or is it jabberwocky all these are name of uh, we can say uh, type of vocab part of vocab uh, but not uh, in regular use but out of these it is nonce that is used for that particular word which is uh, created which is constructed only for a temporary use it's not pure english but it's like the english of shakespeare joyce and kipling gloriously impure now who thus opines about the variety of in indian english especially that was used by administrative people and also many novel writers was it v s naipaul or anthony burgess salman rushdie or neeraj si chaudhary dear friend it was anthony burgess who thus opined that indian uh, indian english is also gloriously impure which among these is the correct order of the four stages of standardization of a language a language generally when it evolves it passes through various stages and some critics are there who have tried to identify these four stages the order is first option is selection codification elaboration of rules obviously and acceptance then we have selection codification acceptance and then elaboration and the next option is selection then elaboration then codification and in the end acceptance and the last is selection acceptance after that codification and elaboration if you give a uh, one or two second and think about this we, you can easily reach the conclusion it is dear friends first uh, words are selected which words should be taken into a uh, serious consideration then they are codified in a particular code or grammar then they are used their uh, we can say structure is elaborated and finally it is accepted by the public and then a language become a standard language uh this model this this particular model of four stage, stages was given by e hogan elf english as lingua franca is used to denote first option use of english as a medium of communication between people who speak different languages second use of english for purpose of international communication third countries where english is not the mother tongue and has no special status and last a variety of english developed in a region where it is not a mother tongue so there are different types of english across the globe and one among them is elf english as lingua franca dear friend it is use of english as a medium of communication between people who speak different languages that is known as elf or english as lingua franca if we talk talk about the second option use of english for purpose of international communication it is english for english as international language the countries where english is not the mother tongue and has no special status it is english as foreign language and a variety of english developed in a region where it is not a mother tongue it is non native variety all these are key terms please try to learn these the term to designate a language in which the form of a word changes to show a change is meaning or grammatical function what is the name for this particular is it dialect analytic language inflecting language or auxiliary language dear friend it is basically inflecting language which was a tradition in old and middle english grammar the term used for an imaginary line that divides two areas which differ in the use of a linguistic item basically we can say the geographical divide of dialect what is the term used for this particular line is it dialect boundary is it idolect idolect is it linguistic marker and the last is isogloss it is a theoretical concept and the the imaginary line 
that divides people of two area is isogloss and ideolect is used how a particular person uses a particular dialect that is known as ideolect register is a key term in linguistics it refers to linguistic variation because of nature of social situation linguistic variation determined by subject matter linguistic variation due to pronunciation and all of the above dear friend register is basically linguistic variation determined by subject matter for example if it is a science uh, related discourse the language used register is different if it is in a we can say fashionable society then it becomes different if we talk about linguistic variation because of the nature of social situation it is known as style our next question is the language from which the elements are mixed on to another language is known as for example the language which which from which the elements are taken and then used in another language is it supra language base language source language or both a and c yes dear friend it is the correct answer is both a and c it is known as supra or source language from which elements are taken and then implemented then used in some other language a speaker who can translate a language item in l1 into an equivalent item of l2 can be called l1 stands for language 1 and l2 stands for language 2 and they are used in bilingualism so a speaker who can translate uh, l2 into l1 if he, uh, one who can find an equivalent so uh, uh, is it incipient bilingual is it compound bilinguals is it subordinate bilingual or coordinate bilingual so the right answer dear friend is subordinate bilingual incipient bilingual has the minimum knowledge of uh, we can say two languages coordinate and uh, co uh, compound are basically in his brain whether the two languages remain separate then it is uh, known as uh, coordinate and if they are mixed together then it is known as compound the development process of a language towards in standardization from basilect the basis of a language to acrolect the final or we can say the finished product this process this development process is known as creolization decreolization elaboration or expansion dear friend actually it is decreolization we know that creole is a language which is used for just for means of business for setting communication as time passes it generates its own rules its grammar performance and through the time it passes from basilect and reaches to the level of acrolect and then we call it has been decreolized and has become a standard language the last question of the day the sum total of all dialects languages language forms and language variants in a speech community is known as verbal repertoire role repertoire social repertoire or ideological repertoire repertoire is a french word which means uh, we can say total resources and all dialect languages language form of a particular speech community it is known as verbal repertoire okay friends that was all that was all in our today's uh, session quick fire session on unit 5 i hope you enjoyed it you get some knowledge about this unit also relatively it is less read uh, unit but questions uh, have been asked and will be asked from this unit also so pay attention on this keep supporting keep giving me your very important input to make these videos better thank you friends